why you are losing members. I hope that you will not be disconnected during the game not in order not to lose your score. Okay, Dr. Mariella, no problem. Okay, so let's get started. So this lecture will be the clinical one. In this lecture, we will we'll discuss the general of the general ophthalmology questions or the general medicine related to ophthalmology and the pathology questions and neuroophthalmology and pediatric ophthalmology. We don't be scared. The neuroophthalmology are not that much because uh, some uh, questions are missing from the original paper. So it will not be that much. It will, it will be like about 70 questions today. Uh, the, the first uh, important thing that I will tell you that now you are opening the games from your mobile phone. I am going to present you questions, this question that appeared in the real test, you will have 30 seconds for each question to check and to answer from your phone. So you will have an opportunity to check the correct answer by choosing the correct color code. Okay. So, and then after the end of the session or after the end of all questions, the highest scorer who had the highest marks and was the most rapid candidate, he will be, there will be a score for those who will be the first one, the second one, and third one. We used to give prizes for the, uh, for the, for the first three, but may, we thought that uh, sometimes this can be not fair because um, what happened in the last two weeks that some candidates were disconnected and, and, or, and lose their scores and others become more uh, in more advanced places. So we will play for the play today. Dr. Jana. Okay, so let me explain. This is, this will be like a game and we are, well, and we are playing. So in order to play, you need to open the Zoom link from your laptop. And if you did that already, then you are, you, uh, you are good. And then you should open uh, your mobile phone at this website. It's called kahoot.it, kahoot.it. Then enter this game pin 278-513 in order to join the game and be able to be able to play and choose the answers and be interactive and have a score. You got it? Okay, so are you all ready? Let's start with the first question appeared in the general ophthalmology or general medicine related to ophthalmology in October 2020 exam. So once the question pops up, you will find the question appear, the, the, the codes, the color codes appear at your mobile phone and you have to choose one before the counter ticks zero. Okay, let's get let's start. Okay, okay, okay. So some of you got it right. And so let's, let's explain this question for you. Which one of the following is most likely to be the major side effect of the cyclophosphamide treatment? Is it hemorrhagic cystitis or nephrotoxicity or optic atrophy or osteosarcoma? The correct answer for this is hemorrhagic cystitis. And what is the common indication for uh, cyclophosphamide in our ophthalmic practice? Can anyone tell me? What is the famous disease that will that is usually treated by cyclophosphamide? Any answer? Just unmute yourself or speak and speak or 
just write in the chat box. No answer. No, it is the Wagner granulomatosis. And this question appeared, yes, Dr. Anthony, this is correct. And this appeared before in the clinical ICO. The cyclophosphamide is the treatment of a choice for the Wagner granulomatosis, which is diagnosed by the C anchor. Okay, so what about the others? Nephrotoxicity is not the correct answer, and let's let us so after after some slides or after some questions, we can show you some follow up slides in order to explain. So let's see first who got the right answer, Dr. Nahal in the first place, followed by Dr. Fatima, then Dr. Sandora. And so this will be like the scoreboard after each question. And this will be how speed that you scored or how speed that you answered the question. Okay, so do you remember this nice guy from the UVITIS lecture? It is the chemoman. Chemoman is a nice way to remember the side effects of the chemotherapeutic agents. So what is the here, the B? It is the shape of the lung and it is for bleomycin. Bleomycin can cause lung problems. You know, bleomycin can cause, uh, it is used in ophthalmology for intralesional injection in the basal cell carcinoma, for example. Then we have the C. The C here is present at the kidney and present at the ear. So C means that these drugs are causing autotoxicity and nephrotoxicity. And what are these drugs? These drugs are the cisplatin, carboplatin, and also the uh, cyclosporin can cause nephrotoxicity. Cyclosporin can be used in many uh, ophthalmic uses for the, for the ocular surface problems. And the carboplatin can be used as one of the, uh, uh, one of the chemotherapeutic agents used for retinoblastoma. P, which is like present at the bladder, place and looks like a bladder. This is for cyclophosphamide and cyclophosphamide is causing hemorrhagic cystitis. Then we have the methotrexate and the methotrexate can cause myelosuppression, again causing bone marrow suppression and the V will be the vincrestin. The vincrestin will cause peripheral neuropathy and it looks like a hand and feet. And what is the use of vincrestin? It is again one of the chemotherapeutic agents used for retinoblastoma. So retinoblastoma has a triple therapy, the vincrestin, the, the carboplatin, and the etoposide. Okay, other, other immunosuppressive agents that are important if you, for you to know uh, is the methotrexate, the uh, azathioprine, and the cyclosporin. Methotrexate, as we said, it will cause bone marrow depression and hepatotoxicity. The azathioprine, cause the bone marrow depression. The cyclosporin is very important to know that it will cause nephrotoxicity, hepatotoxicity, gingival hyperplasia, not hypoplasia, and hirschtism. So these are the most important chemotherapeutic agents and their side effects. So I hope that it, this is clear now. Okay, let's now move to the next question. Are you ready? Here we start. Okay, so half of you got it right that the phoscarnet is preferable to gain cyclovir in management of cytomegalovirus retinitis associated with the HIV for which one of the following? Does the gain cyclo, so the question is asking about what is the advantage of phoscarnet over gain cyclovir or what is present in the phoscarnet that is not present in the gain cyclovir? It will cause limited nephrotoxicity, no, that this is a disadvantage for in the postcarnet that it will cause nephrotoxicity, unlike the gancyclovir. So A is wrong. 
it will cause minimal hepatotoxicity. Well, both of them have minimal hepatotoxicity. So it is not an advantage for the foscarnet over the ganciclovir. Both of them have limited hepatotoxicity. It causes minimal myelosuppression. Yes, this is the correct answer. The first carnet does, co does cause minimal myelosuppression than ganciclovir. While ganciclovir, the main problem of it, it is the myelosuppression or the bone marrow depression. It has high ocular or high oral bioavailability. No, this is not a true answer. The high oral bioavailability, it is the only for the val ganciclovir. It is not only, it is even not for the ganciclovir, it is for the val ganciclovir. So this is the explanation for this question. Let's see who got it right. Still, we are keeping the same order. We hope that others will join us or this board will show other and coming from the back. And let's see the explanation. As we said in the uveitis lecture, cytomegalovirus can be treated by a wide variety of drugs. Every drug has a specific side effects. For example, the ganciclovir will cause bone marrow suppression and as well as its derivative, which is valgancyclovir, but the valgancyclovir, the advantage of it, that it is oral, that it can be administered oral. The foscarnet is the problem of the foscarnet. It is the renal toxicity as well as the ciduhovir. So the foscarnet is better for, uh, than the gancyclovir that it will not cause myelosuppression or bone marrow depression, okay? Other forms of the drugs can be also available to minimize the systemic toxicity like intravitreal injection. This is available for ganciclovir and the foscarnet. And we can also implant a ganciclovir implant or uh, the surgical rule in cytomegalovirus retinitis that to, is to manage patients with retinal detachment. So is, if, uh, if, everything, if anything is not clear, please let me know. Okay, let's move to the next question. Great, so most of you got it right. This is like a basic question, asking about the, some uh, uh, pharmacological properties of antibiotics like aminoglycosides. So the question is asking about when the systemic aminoglycosides used to treat the ocular infection, which one of the following tests should be monitored? The blood urea, erythrolyte, and the creatinine level should be monitored if a patient is administering systemic aminoglycosides because these drugs are nephrotoxic. So this is the right answer, not hemoglobin or liver function or platelet count, okay? So aminoglycosides have been associated like gentamicin, like the topramycin, like the amikacin. All these have been associated with nephrotoxicity and also autotoxicity. Okay, so let's get ready for the next question. Here we start. So we have now Dr. Hanna, Dr. Asif, starting to score some correct answers. Good, uh, good job. And Dr. Nahal and Dr. Fatima and Dr. Sindura are keeping the first three places. So let's see who is going to be the first and second, third till the end. And let's go to the next question. Wow. 
Great, so most of you got it right. When we are comparing the endocyanin green to the fluorescein angiography, which one of the following is most likely to be true? The ICG better identifies the classic necroidal neovascular membrane. This is not the true. The, the primary and the, 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 uh, the fluorescein angiography will show the classic type better, but the ICG is reserved for cases in which there is a suspicion of polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. So ICG is not the better or the best for the classic type of the CNV. ICG is more protein bound in the plasma in the blood stream. This is the correct answer as about 98%. It's about 98% of the, uh, the ICG molecules are bound to albumin. And this, may, this bounding of uh, the proteins in our larger protein like albumin in the blood, which make the blood vessels of the choroidal circulation retain the ICG molecule. And this what will make the ICG is good for the choroidal uh, lesions. So actually the ICG is superior to the fluorescein for uh, choroidal circulation for two reasons. First of all, it is bound to the plasma protein. It is bound to 98% of them. It is bound to the albumin, albumin present in the blood. And here is the ICG molecule. And and then the choriocapillaries has fenestration. So this is fenestration. This fenestration will not pass this larger molecules of the ICG and the albumin. So the ICG and the albumin will stay in the choriocapillaries and will stay in the choroidal blood vessels, will, be not, will not be lost as the fluorescein, resulting in delineation of the choroidal circulation. The second reason why the ICG is superior than fluorescein that the ICG can penetrate into pigments, can penetrate into melanin, can penetrate into the lipofuscine, which will show that, uh, so that the, there is no masking of the melanin pigment, like the masking that happens with the fluorescein. You know, the fluorescein can mask the choroidal flush and the choroidal circulation because of the pigment present in the RPE, because of any uh, stain or any or lipofuscine, this, this doesn't happen with the ICG as they can penetrate through, or the fluorescence can penetrate through these pigments. Neither ICG nor the fluorescein is iodine-based. No, the ICG is iodine-based. And the peak fluorescence of the fluorescein is at longer wavelength. No, it is at shorter, because the peak fluorescence of the ICG it is at the infrared range, <coughs> while the fluorescein is at the visible light range within the uh, blue and green spectrum. So let's see the what are the uh, who first got the right answer, and so Dr. Asif is coming to the second place and Dr. Uh, third place. Dr. Sindura for the fourth place, and let's see the range of fluorescence of the fluorescein. So I just mentioned this for in the last lecture of optics for those who attended the basic course. So fluorescence is meaning that the, the material has a tendency to absorb with a short wavelength and emit longer wavelength. The sodium fluorescein absorb blue and emit green, and the ICG absorb uh, infrared and also emit infrared, but the infrared emitted is at a longer wavelength than that of absorbed. You can see clearly that the range of wavelength of ICG is higher than those of the fluorescein and geography. Okay, so let's move now to the next question. And I hope that you are ready. Three, two, one, time over. Exactly, most of you got it right. Congratulations. So regarding the progression of which one of the diabetic complications has been shown to be reduced by the captopril, 
Captopril is an ACE inhibitor or angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. So it can be used for management of hypertension. And we have different diabetic complications like the, the diabetic complications can cause nephropathy, peripheral vascular diseases, neuropathy and retinopathy. So which one of these are decreased by the antihypertensive of the captopril? It is the nephropathy. That's correct answer. So let's see first, let's see first who got it right. Dr. Shayma is coming now on the board. Welcome, Dr. Shayma. And Dr. Nahal is still on the head of the, of the competitors with the first place, followed by Dr. Fatima and Dr. Asif. And let's see the explanation. So this is the basic structure of the glomerulus. There is afferent arteriole, and then these are the capillaries within the glomerulus, then the afferent, uh, the efferent arteriole. What happens in the hypertension that there is constriction of the efferent arteriole due to increase the pressure. This will lead to back pressure in the, in the afferent arteriole causing dilatation of the afferent arteriole. And this will result in stagnation of the plasma present here in the, in the glomerulus with leakage of proteins causing proteinuria and nephropathy. So the, this kidney is now losing protein. This is what happens in diabetes. So what happens, so this is the diabetic nephropathy. What is the role of angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor like captopril or the angiotensin receptor blockers? They will just decrease the pressure of the efferent arteriole. So this will, will result in normalization of the pressure within the afferent arteriole. And there will be no longer leakage of proteins from the glomerular. So it will improve the nephropathy. So I hope that you now understand the mechanism behind it or mechanism behind how the captopril, it is just improving the uh, nephropathy. Okay, well done everyone. So let's get let's move now to the next question. So this is strange. This is a basic question that appeared in the clinical exam. Okay, so I know that if you are not well familiar with the basics, you will find this question difficult. So let me explain it for you. Which one of the following is most likely to describe a segment of a gene that is represented in the mature RNA product? Is it the codon or the exon or the intron or the lucus? The correct answer is the exon. So what are these terms? What are they referring to? The codon is like a trip. Let me just annotate and... Okay. What is the codon? The codon is just a triplet of bases that will code for a specific amino acid, like for example, A, C, G, or G, G, A, any triplet of codons that will code for a specific amino acid, this is called a codon. So this is not the correct answer. What is the exons? Exons are parts of the mRNA that will become expressed for or code for protein. And so these, these are parts of the, uh, of the mRNA that will be useful and will be used for producing protein and so since they are will be expressed for or code for protein they will be present at the mature RNA product. Unlike the exon the intron will be lost meaning that the intron it is nucleotide sequence within the gene that will be removed by a process called the RNA splicing and what is the RNA splicing? It is just a process that happens of maturation of the mRNA. So the immature mRNA has intron, but the mature mRNA doesn't have introns. 
Finally, what is the locus? Locus, it is just a location. Location of a specific gene within the chromosome. So it has no relation to the mRNA. It is present at the DNA. So this is all the explanations for all. Let's see who got it right. Dr. Asif is doing a great job by coming to the second place and Dr. Nahal is in danger. <laughs> okay, so let's see who, uh, what is the explanation. You can see that this is the, the, the immature mRNA or the pre-mRNA. It consists of exons, which, will, which are parts will code for proteins. It will called exons, here and exon, and here and exon. And there are parts called introns. These introns will be removed during the process called the mRNA splicing. So when the immature mRNA is transformed to mature mRNA, the introns are lost. And only the exons are present. And these exons are, will be the, the contain the sequences, the nucleotide sequences that will code for protein, uh, eventually for the protein synthesis. Okay. So I hope that this is clear. I know that this is unexpected in, in the context of a clinical exam, but the ICO doesn't make a big difference between clinical, what's clinical and what's basic. Okay, let's move now to the third or the next question. Exactly, most of you got right. So we have a patient on heparin, so he has bleeding tendency. And what, uh, which one of the following drugs will be will make him at more risk for hemorrhagic complications? Is it the aminoglycosides, or the cephalosporins, or the fluoroquinolones, or the penicillins? No, it is the penicillins. And why is that? Because penicillins cause thrombocytopenia. So this will add to increased risk of hemorrhagic complications for these patients. So let's see who got it right. Dr. Fatima in the second place and Dr. Hannah and Dr. Sadia are coming from the back. Welcome on board. So the, the order is changing very frequently. I hope that it will be more exciting. So let's now move to the next question. Exactly. So here we have lesions in present in this figure. These lesions are multiple small irregular pigmented lesions present in the retina. Sometimes they can, can be oval, sometimes they can be spindle shaped. So they are irregular in shape and appears in, in clusters and could show some variable pigmentations or hypopigmented margin. This is the classic description of the atypical chirpy or a typical congenital hypertrophy of retinal pigment epithelium. Why, why it is very, very important to identify these lesions? Because these lesions can be associated with adenomatous polyposis of the colon, which can predispose to cancer colon. This is very, very important in order to save the patient's life. You have, you have a responsibility to detect these lesions, specifically that the here in the question, in the real question in the exam, it says that it masks the choroidal fluorescence. 
and and it in the exam itself said that the fluorescein angiography is available, but they don't, didn't show or they didn't present the, the fluorescein angiography. But even you don't have to see the fluorescein in order to know the diagnosis, because this is very classic for the atypical Sherpy or atypical congenital hypertrophy of retinal pigment epithelium. So they are associated with adenomatous polypodes of the colon. This is the correct answer. And if you, uh, if any one of you set this exam in the last October and uh, would they, they would have known this uh, the right answer of this question if they show, if they saw the the my lecture present on the YouTube it's called let's see who worked that first Dr uh, Asif is coming to the second place so I have a lecture on the YouTube it is called uh, if you, uh, your patient dies if you don't check his eyes or if you skip his eyes. Then uh, I presented many conditions in present in the clinics or in the, during investigations or during surgical procedures that can cause patient death. So this is one, and I mentioned the Sherpy or the atypical Sherpy, and also mentioned that it will cause familial adenomatous or associated with familial adenomatous polyposis, which can produce both to cancer colon. So those patients should be, you should order for them colonoscopy. If you didn't see the lecture, please uh, uh, check it at YouTube. It will it is present at the uh, the channel of iCourses. Okay, so let's move.